Hello and welcome to the very second um, meeting for Out of the Box Biz. I'm delighted you're here. We had 30 people in the room last month and we've got 40, I think we're a bit shy of 40 at the moment. I've got a few latecomers coming along and things shift and move and ebb and flow at the last minute. As you probably saw, it's been an absolute chaos for the last hour and a half since I stepped foot in here because technology wasn't on our side. No one's fault, it just wasn't on our side. So I'm sorry if I appeared distracted, um, but now we have a show and the show must go on. And this month we have a logo. <laughs> That's how new this business is. And the graphic designer is in the room. And we're going to do a networking activity later on. So you might find out who she is. Anyway. So welcome along. If just the logistics, help yourself to tea, coffee, um, and the food that's in the room. We do have a break at about 7.30, 7.40ish. More food and more refreshments will come into the room. I almost got the wine coming in now after all the technology issues, but I thought you might want me sober for the first time. <laughs> a couple of hours. Um, and the toilets are just out to the foyer to the right. I'm sure um, many of you have been here before. So. I just like to share why I do this or why I'm standing on this stage bringing people together. And I have a mission. My mission is, because I just want to let you know, not, my mission isn't, isn't to do with my eyesight. My laptop is currently far too far for these new bifocal, multifocal, whatever they call um, contacts to work. So I'm going to look at my screen. So I apologise for that. Because that is in public speaking land a big no-no. Because you look a little bit shifty or else you look like you don't actually know what you're talking about when you turn and read your own screen. So I'm sorry about that. So the way you get away with it is making sure your laptop is close enough facing you so it looks like you're always looking at the audience. A little tip there. So anyway, what I, my mission is is to empower people to create greater freedom, choice and opportunity in their lives. Connecting them with like-minded people in an inspiring, inclusive environment. And out of the box biz is my version of that. So do let me know if you think I'm fulfilling my vision after you've experienced this evening. And technology really doesn't love me today. Okay, what is out of the box biz? What we do here is we have face-to-face -face contact. So we're out of the box in terms of out of the box of the computer screen, the laptop, the smartphone, the iPad, the iPod, whatever the electronic devices are available to us to connect, they are all with us um, now for a very long time. And it's very important to have a very good social online presence in business. But I believe it has now come uh, a point in all this online connectivity, that's such a word, to incorporate it with face-to-face -face contact. So that's why I do live events, and that's why I bring you all in the room together, to have face-to-face -face contact, to make long-term business relationships. What we also do as a result of that, a byproduct of that, is you get to know people for a very long time, and therefore you increase your sales, which develops your business and grows your business. But, so that's what we're interested in as well. And our gold members and artist members are here displaying their products around, um, or services, around the room and I'll talk about the different levels of out of the box biz membership later on. Um, you also have a whole lot of business education and I'm delighted to have four experts in money matters. Today's tonight's theme is money matters. I am theming each meeting and I know a little bit about networking and I'm sharing a few things about networking each month with you, but I don't pretend to be the expert in business in all aspects of business, so I'm inviting the experts in so we can all learn together. And tonight I've got four speakers. We've got Ross Patterson and Tom Herbley. Is that how you pronounce it, Tom? Yeah, pretty close, yeah. Hubley. <laughs> Hubley, sorry about that. No, that's I didn't right. Check that before. And we're having a double act of accountants, just to jazz. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so yeah, Ross is saying no pressure or anything, Claire. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, and then we have Phil Hatt talking about invoice financing. Who knows what the hell invoice financing is? Who wants to know more about it? And who wants to know, and you all should be putting your hands up for this, who wants to know how on earth it's relevant to you? 
<laughs> yeah. Well, Bill's going to share a lot of stories and some case studies about real life business people and how it's relevant to them. Um, and then we finish off after the break um, with Tracy Loebscher. Where's Tracy? Did I get it right? I've been practicing for like five <laughs> weeks to get a surname right. I think I got cooey of it. And she is just known as the cash flow queen. And that's all I'm going to say about Tracy until later. So um, how did I get sidetracked in that? Anyway, we have business events, you're in one now, and we have four levels of mentor, I'll talk to you about that later. We, this business is 10 weeks old, and we have 35 members. <laughs> Thanks to all of you members who are in the room. Could you hand up if you're an out-of-box biz member? So if you're not, go check them out and find out why you're not, okay? Um, no pressure. <laughs> So we had 20 members on the 5th of February when we had our first event. Um, the reason, the big reason why we had 20 members is I had a business before Out of the Box Biz called Interactive Arts, which was an online art gallery I had for six years. And it's very much the same structure as this business. And I invited the artists, the fantastic artists I worked with, to come and take a huge leap of faith and come do something new with me. And I think I've got about 10 who have continued on. So I'm very, very grateful for those beautiful people because I didn't want to close that business and go see you later, I don't want to know you anymore. So I came up with this to invite them to come along the journey and they have. So how cool is that? So we had 20 on the 5th of February. Now we've got 35 on the 12th of March. I would like to see us grow to 120 members by the 30th of June, 2014. <laughs> Just putting it out there. So if you know anybody, any members, who want to help me achieve that, then how cool will this be? We'll obviously need a bigger room, and that's no problem, um, to have 120 members in the room each month. How cool would that be? Yeah? Okay, that's enough about that. This is a quote that I was going to take out. So Marilyn and I were talking on Facebook about timing our presentation, and I'm way over time already, so I'm just going to, she's going to be like going top, top to me. She's a vocal coach, and she coached me many, 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 many eons ago, and you can talk to her about those days a long time ago. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. That is a quote I read probably about 10 years ago. Now, I can tell you, the people I spend the most time with now, 10 years on, is completely different to 10 years ago. And that's not to say I dissed all my family and friends. That's just to say I worked out what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be, and then all I do is I carve out time to spend valuable time with the right kind of pe people to support me in my goals, dreams, and aspirations. And that's what I want to ha happen in this room. We are in a business meeting, so we do have a formal agenda, and this is it. It is in your folders. If you don't have a folder, please go and grab one off the registration desk. Um, and we are going through, I was, although we had chaos with technology, we were actually officially doing open networking. I wasn't just late to the stage, I was probably five minutes late, but we were open networking. We're doing currently the out of the box is um, vision and networking tips, we're about to go do that and then go into the speakers who I've already mentioned. Um, we have a break in the middle, as I said, and that is open networking time, because I believe in a networking event, you need to have structured network, networking opportunities and also have free flow networking opportunities. So you can just get to know the people that you choose rather than me imposing my strategies on you the whole three hours. Um, and then I have two of our fantastic out-of-the-box um, thinkers. I call our members out-of-the-box thinkers. Um, and we're going to have a five-minute showcase from Carol Hazel and Raja. Where are you? How do you pronounce your surname? Karuman. Karuman. Oh, that's beautiful. You say it much better than me. <laughs> anyway, the five minutes, it's by invitation that I invite um, two or three members each month to come and share who they are and what they do with you. And then we have, um, I go a quick run through with the membership, and then we have more open networking to take us out to nine o'clock, official close. Now, official close normally, I'm pretty loose with official, as in nine, I'm not like gonna shut the doors in your face and say, go. The only technicality I've got tonight, and the reason why I'm gonna share, I wouldn't normally share this with you, but it's kind of relevant. I have got the insane thing to do 
is I need to achieve being packed up in my car, driving to South Perth, being in South Perth by 9.30, because it's a relevant story to this, with a car transfer taking me to the airport for an 11 o'clock flight to Sydney to work at 7.15 Sydney time tomorrow. I don't want to know what time that is in Perth. <laughs> so, this is not by choice. There's been, have you ever had life events occur and you have absolutely no control over? And Sue Papadoulos, I think last month, said, you know, do you throw your hands up in the air and just start crying and run away and just say, no, this is not meant to be? Well, I've texted her this afternoon because she is the reason why I'm working at <laughs> 7 in the morning. I'm her, I'm her national event manager. And um, yeah, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I didn't throw my hands up in the air, I just go, yeah, I can do this. Just for the record, Sue did say I could fly um, tomorrow morning, but because I have a personal life and wish to be back here on Friday night to go to a particular concert, that's why I'm doing the red eye. So I don't want you to feel sorry for me, just the explanation at 9.15, I'll say, love you, bye, go, because I will be. Anyway, let's move on. Before we get to any content, is there any other um, NIFNEX Influential 100 Award winners in the room? Stand up, please. These fabulous people. Can we have a round of applause? Now, Pauline, you'll be one out. You're not a member yet. No, just yes. throwing it out there. <laughs> Thank you. So if you could just take a seat. I was delighted to be nominated for the same award. And you know what? You only need to be nominated by one person. Now, I didn't know who nominated me, and I was just so delighted and um, had the all warm in a glow and fuzzies and all the rest of it, that I thought I should just pitch up to the award night and maybe the person who nominated would, um, me wouldn't actually make themselves known. That didn't happen, but I was delighted when they got to F, because they went by in order of first name, I got called up to the stage, so I won too. So I was really pretty unwrapped with that. And I have to say, I must, uh, it was complete a relief, because when you're throwing yourself out there, going to build a business called Out of the Box Biz, you want to hope you're in full control. So I was kind of I was like, oh, shoo! Because I said to my partner at the time, if I don't win, I have to leave, because what did I say? It's just embarrassing. But anyway, he goes, of course you're going to win, so he had faith, I didn't. Um, and this is my old slides, because I was going to show you this later. So I'm having my whole spiel now, and you're not going to hear from me much for the rest of the night. I just wanted to share with you, although we're only 10 weeks old, we have had a feature article on the Out of the Box Beers this week in the Western Suburbs Weekly. And it's featuring Natasha Connor, who's over there with her beautiful baby, um, Barlow. She's an interior designer, and this photograph for the paper was taken in her office with Marilyn Phillips, a vocal coach I've already um, mentioned. Um, those beautiful ladies um, were very generous in their time to come and assist me with an interview and to do that article. So how cool is that? So if you want to know more about us, well then hang out. So this is the business network activity. Okay, this is where you go, excellent. So in theory, what is the difference between a lead and a referral? Hands up. Sharon. Yes, yeah, Sharon. I, can I just say before Sharon responds, I was having a meeting with Sharon and she inspired me because we were talking about the difference of a, a lead and a referral. And I said, oh, that'll be my tip, that'll be my thing. And here she is. Yes, Sharon. Um, the difference between a lead and a referral is if somebody gives you a name and you can use their name uh, when you're with the person, that's a referral. They just give you a name for that's a lead. Yeah, did everyone hear that? So it's, it's, the key is the permission. It's when you um, say, I was going to use, where's Linda? Linda. So Linda, um, you have a beauty salon, right? No. What's your, yeah, what's your premises? Um, well, I have a skincare brand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I was going to use you because I was talking to a hairdresser. Linda, let's just pretend you have a beauty salon. She has beauty products. Can we just pretend? Because I was talking to a hairdresser about um, Natasha. So Natasha is an interior designer and she um, specialises in commercial design. So if Linda had premises, which I'm really embarrassed to realise, I didn't know that, sorry Linda. Um, but Linda's going so well with her beauty product, she's decided to open her own premises. 
So if I'm just saying to Linda, um, Natasha, it would be great, and don't give her any permission of um, swapping the contact details, that's called what's a, uh, that is a lead. A referral is when I say to um, Linda, I know a fantastic interior designer, and would you mind if I pass your contact details on to Natasha and she can contact you, just have a coffee, see if it'll work out. That's a referral, in my opinion. Has anyone got something to you know, add on that? Or is everyone in pretty much agreement with that? Nick? Would be great to actually have a meeting and meet them together with you. With all three them. people? Yeah. <gasps> that is the dream. But you know what? You can That's do that in this room right now. We're going to do that. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. I knew I'd draw it out. Draw it out. You're, that's because you're a good networker. Um, so, difference between a lead and a referral. You've got little workbooks there. If you want to make a note of that, write it down now. You have like 30 seconds. Because then we're going to get on to the practical bit. <laughs> so pretend you're going to write it if you're not. For my sake. Has anyone got any questions about that before we move on? It's all fairly straightforward because you're all um, very good networkers. I know the majority of you. There's a few people I don't know, which is fantastic. So if you need to, write it down. Now this is the practical bit because I'm not into just talking about how to network. I'm interested in actually doing it. So now we're going to do it. This could be a little complicated, but um, I'm sure you guys will um, step up to the task. I want you to find a lead or a referral in the room for someone seeking assistance in an aspect of finance because we're themed Money Matters tonight. So what you need to do is get up out of your seats, number one. Ask people in the room to describe what they do. It's sometimes known as the elevator pitch or if you're from B&I, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. And what their number one need is in business. Not personal life, business. <laughs> share what you do and and need and share what you do and you need back to them. So you have a little, this is me, this is what I do, this is what I need tonight. This is me, you know. Okay, you get it. Then, given we have limited time, we're going to spend about five minutes on this. What strategies do you think we can all use, or a variety of them, to achieve this, to find a lead or referral for anybody in this room? Anyone? I've got an idea. <laughs> Hillary? Table to table. Is that what you're thinking? How are we going to? Yeah, how are you going to achieve finding a lead or referral for anybody in this room? Michelle? Well, look, do you sort of mean like talk to someone and then thinking in your head who else you've already met tonight? That you yes. Go, yeah, I, I clearly know. didn't uh, explain myself very well. Okay. Yes, that's exactly okay. right, Michelle. We're only only for the need of finance. So you've got to find someone who needs a need in finance. I and mean, if you've got a need in finance, that's not a judgmental, critical thing because you can be the most successful business and still have issues with cash flow or with, um, I don't know, um, you know, finance or whatever, okay? So it's not trying to flush out or all desperately needing help in finance. I've just got, I can't use the theme finance for a reason. Can anyone think why? In a room, a meeting called Money Matters. Huh? Because Money Matters. It does, but we also have four experts in Money Matters here that we could refer to. So I'm just trying to make it easy for you. So we've already got people that we can refer to. So what do you have to do now? Find people with needs for these experts. I mean, that's one way you could do it. You can do it anyway, you don't have to do it for these three experts. I'm sure we've got other experts in the room. Callie's a settlement agent. Um, and Sharon's in a fine, you're doing a financing thing. Uh, um, terms of trade, cap, cap, for cash flow. Yeah, yeah, so it's to do with finance. Okay, do you know what you're doing? For the next five minutes. <laughs> Put your hand up if you have no clue. So I'm, going, I'm wandering around this room and <laughs> no idea of what I'm doing. Okay, good. I'm going to put some music on. You've got five minutes and I want stories at the end. Oh. Alright, what I'm interested in finding out in the room, in our meetings, is how much business is actually being generated. Because that's why we're here, isn't it? 
I'm not shy of saying we're here to business work, network for business, which means dollars in the door and bums on seats if you sell seminar seats or whatever, whatever it is you do. Okay, so let's not shy away from that. So let's get down to the nitty gritty and that's why I've created these little referral sheets and you'll see them in the middle of the tables. So um, a referral sheet like this and it's not talking about the detail of what the business transaction is or the conversation, it's just recording it as saying that it occurred as a result of relationships built on out of the box biz and then we've got a sale of any dollars that are actually generated in business. Now, I don't want the detail, I just want to know who referred to who and a, a, round, a ballpark figure. So if, if you'd rather not say specifics, you know, if you want to round it up, down, inside out, whatever, just to give us an indication of how much business has actually been generated in this room. And if you're comfortable with that, I've got a little red box over there, which is for referrals, and I've got a little, uh, little grey box over there, which is for the dollars that are generated. So I'd really encourage you to do that, because I think it would just be an interesting thing to see what our, your return on investment is. And I hope you're doing your own personal recording of any business that you are generating um, out of this room, particularly members, because you're paying um, a membership, so you need, to, you need to expect a return on investment, and I'd like to know if you're achieving that, or if you are or you aren't, and I've left my little flicker thing down here. So let's move right along. We have the dynamic duo of Ross Patterson and Tom Herberley, and they are from RSM Bird Cameron. 